Good morning, y'all. It's Cody. Cody's bait and tackle. We're from Missouri. I gave a little bit of a catfishing report yesterday. I didn't didn't even think about going over how I was fishing for the blue cat. I had a lot of questions. A lot of people messaged me last night. Uh, pretty well from May until some point in November, I drift fish. I drag baits on Truman. I don't. Tr I don't try to vertical drift. I, I've tried it. You know, you get fish tight to a ledge or something. You can try to do the vertical thing. You'll catch a few fish doing it. You're not going to catch big numbers on Truman. Uh, now, Lake of the Ozarks, if they're running a lot of water, you can drift with that current. And sometimes you can tear up numbers vertical fishing. Uh, as far as on Truman, you want to be dragging in baits. I'm going to kind of go over just a simple Santee Cooper rig. Uh, it's super super easy and all you guys that know me i try to find the easiest way to do something keep it simple that way I, if i break off if i have something get messed up i can be retied in a matter of minutes uh hold on just a second here and i'm gonna go over a little bit of go over a little bit of what i use so i just use an inch and a half or two inch peg float there Real easy. It's got a slot in it. Your line goes in it. You peg both ends in. That'll float your bait up off the bottom. This is my my slinky weight. This is just super easy. It's a it's a snap swivel. You got eight quarter ounce egg sinkers, twenty five or thirty pound monofilament line. Ninety percent of the time, when you get hung up, all that's getting hung up is gonna be this weight. Your Last year I drifted all fall. I might have lost two or three hooks all fall long. From, you know, the end of August all the way up to November. I never even had to retie. All I lost was these weights. That was it. Uh, you can go buy all the fancy, fancy weights you want. You know, a lot of them aren't made to break off like this. So, you're going to lose all, your whole rig. If you're using them pre-made, you know, that ain't got the mono break off on it. So you, you can do it however. They sell a ton of this stuff online. Uh, I don't sell a lot of the pre-made stuff in my shop. Uh, just, it's so much easier to make it yourself. Works better. To me it does, you know. It, yeah, you got to do a little bit more work, but it does its job. Uh, I'll go a little bit over here how I rig this up. And then I'll talk about how I fish it. So, I switched back and forth on hooks. You know, I've used every single type of hook pretty well that's made for catfishing. The last five years, I keep going back to them right there. The the Demon Mustad hooks, you know, uh, these are 9 aught. The 9 aughts are awesome for cut bait. It will uh, come, you know, October after the lake turns over and I run some live bait. Or if I'm fishing in heavy current, I'll go to the 10 aught because I'm using bigger baits. But when I'm just using small cut bait, the 9 aught is, is the best I've found. Uh, I do offset that hook just a hair. Right now, this one's straight. I haven't offset it because it's going to go back in the box here in just a second. But uh, you can snell knot that. You can just tie it on regular. Honestly, I've, I've ran rods with both. I don't have any which way that hooks up better than another. Uh, most of the time, I just tie it right onto the end. Uh, these hooks used to have an issue. If you, if you didn't snell knot it, your line had slipped through. Uh, they've pretty well got that fixed now. I have not had one do that in probably three or four years. It would slip right through the where the eye is. I just tie that on there. Now I'm, I'm gonna mention a lot of time I'll use shad sides. A shad side dragging through the water on a long line is going to sit there and spin and spin and spin and spin. Yesterday it started off, that's all they wanted was shad sides. By the time I got off the water there about 11 o'clock, it didn't matter if I threw out a head, a chunk, a side, it was getting eight. 
so I didn't do it yesterday too much. Uh, you can buy these corks uh, like Whiskers, Seekers, a few other of the big big brands online out there. Have these that have a swivel on both ends. Uh, some people run the Demon Dragons. You run your line through. Basically, it's a top water with a rattle in it. I've ran them. I think I catch less numbers of fish with them. Uh, less numbers of the smaller fish. You do get a more aggressive bite on your bigger fish when you're running them. But three quarters of the fish will actually hit the demon dragon instead of hitting the, the bait. Uh, that's been my biggest issue with them. I've had them things come back just scratched to pieces from them big fish hitting the, the rattle instead of the bait. So. I don't use them very much anymore. I've tried them on and off here and there and gave up on that. So, like I was saying, the easiest way to do that is just put an inline swivel. Uh, these are expensive. They are a really good roller swivel, VNC. That's not a real big swivel. It's a smaller swivel, but a, you're not going to break it on a catfish. don't matter what. You can put that swivel right there if you want, and then your cork ain't going to slide down to your hook either uh, and that will eliminate your whole rig from getting twisted up if you want to most of the time I don't do it I just untwist it if it does twist up it ain't that big of a deal uh, basically you guys are probably wondering why I just tied that on with no no swivel to put my weight nothing uh, you know I've done the videos before on how to do that loop or not so, super, super simple here. You'll see real quick why I use a snap swivel on that weight. There's that, there's that looper knot right there. Simplest thing possible. If you're like me, you fish a lot, you run six rods at a time, or sometimes eight rods if I'm pulling planter boards. Super, super easy to rig up right there. A lot of people been asking me about pulling planter boards, you know, too. Uh, if you're fishing deeper water, I don't recommend it. Uh, you can catch some of them suspended fish, but it's a really slow bite. Uh, you know, just as far as on trimming, if, if I'm fishing in under 10 foot of water, I'll pull planter boards. That's the only time. Uh, if I'm fishing any deeper than that, I'm, I'm pretty well just dragging, long lining right across the bottom. Uh, just a simple rig right there. That's it. Uh, some of you that don't know dragging baits or long lining, you just use your trolling motor. You know, we haven't had no wind, so I haven't had to use a drift sock or nothing. You just put your trolling motor down, find either a mud flat to run down that's got a lot of bait on it, or find you a contour line, like where the ledge drops off, get on the top of it if it's got fish down it, just kind of run down it real slow with your trolling motor. Yesterday, it didn't matter what speed I ran, anywhere from 0.4 all the way up to 1.2 mile an hour, them fish was hitting. Uh, the little bit faster I went, the harder they hit. Uh, I'd get a lot of small like channel cap bites if I slowed down so I pretty well stayed around 0 .7, 0 .8 and that was kind of right in between and seemed to work the best for me. Uh, hopefully that answers some of the questions you guys was messaging me about yesterday. So uh, Once the lake turns over I will run a bigger hook because I'll run a lot of live bait and a lot of bigger like butterfly shad and stuff like that. So right now you can't keep the live bait alive on bottom. So no matter what you throw it out there, over you you getting over probably 15, 18 foot of water, that bait's not going to live very long. So there's not much oxygen down there. So that's about all I've got for you guys. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. Uh, if you have any more questions, just comment them on my on my videos. Leave me a comment, and I'll try to cover that in one of the next videos. Uh, I appreciate it, y'all. Thanks for all the feedback you're giving me. Have a good one.